So now it's your uh, your junior year, Mm -hmm. and we're actually playing against the University of Colorado. We're in the Orange Bowl. We're we're down by one point, and I'm huffing and puffing. I, I actually don't see this, but I've seen the video of it. Okay. And can you kind of walk us through this? Because this is kind of like an amazing, which which I didn't know until I saw the video. Okay. You actually said, you know, hey, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and take it. <laughs> this, is, this is amazing. This is an amazing story. Oh, okay. So we're, we're it's, it's the second time we're playing them. So now it's a really, it's a defense, man. Essentially, you guys were the stars of that game because it was a defensive Back and forth, there was nobody was doing nothing. It's ten to nine. It's like a minute and six seconds left on the clock. And I remember they put the punt team out, and I remember my first thought was uh, they're probably not going to punt it to us. And the only reason I was thinking that was because I was like, well, <clears throat> we're pretty good. Like, right. like, like, it, and it wasn't. An arrogant thing, it wasn't, it was just a matter of fact. That was all. It was just more of a matter of fact. Exactly. The thing that I thought was going to happen was, I don't know if you remember, but their punter, his name was Tom Ruin. And I, my sophomore year, he was the number one punter in the country. Right. So I, and, and then this year, my junior year, I think his stats weren't quite what they were the year before. So in my mind, I was like, well, maybe he's going to show off his leg just to let the guys know that he still got it. And he might kick a, a deep one if he punt it out of bounds or punt it out of the end zone. Like I, like in my mind, I didn't even feel like the ball was going to come where we could actually feel it. Right. So all of a sudden, I hear that whistle that only Coach Holtz's players – and well-trained dogs can hear. And I hear that bad boy, and I was like, what? I looked to the sideline, and Coach Holtz was like, Roger, Roger, middle return. And he was giving a sign for middle. He was going down his shirt like this, middle return. Don't fair catch the ball. Don't fair catch the ball. And I looked at him, and and he, like, I think he understood (laughs) He understood the gravity of the moment because it was like his energy was really up. Okay. So, and my attempt was to calm him down and say, Hey coach, it's okay. So I turned to him and to acknowledge that I understood everything he was saying. I wasn't going to fair catch the ball. I wasn't going to uh, do any return, but middle return and calm down. We got this. I gave him a thumbs up. So I just gave him a thumbs up. I looked at the sideline. I gave him a thumbs up in that spirit. Okay. So I turn back. Now, Chris, let me tell you, bro. All of a sudden, my mind is still in the, okay, I know what Coach Holt is saying. They're not going to kick it to us. They take a penalty. Matter of fact, when they take the penalty, that's when Coach Holtz goes through all of the don't fair catch the ball because my right. my initial instruction, this is it, my initial instruction, um, if the ball goes past a 10-yard line, let it go. Okay. Because you don't, you, so I put my heels on a 10. Right. The ball goes over my head. You know, fair catch, run away, right. let, let the ball go. All of a sudden, the doggone ball is in the air, and it was like – I remember Coach Holtz used to tell the quarterbacks all the time, like, don't try to aim at whatever you're throwing at, whatever you're talking, whether it's a receiver or a tailback. Um, he said your brain already knows where everything is, and you practice enough, so just release the ball – and it'll go where it's supposed to go. Mm. So like, he was telling like there's an automatic mechanism inside of you that's going to kick in. Okay. Well, I remember looking up, and all of a sudden, I knew 
even though I had to back up a little, I knew the ball wasn't going to go over my head. Right. So it was like the thought that they're not going to kick it to us. Like it, it immediately left my brain. And then from my heart, I'm telling you, this is what I heard. Don't go down. No matter what, <laughs> don't go down. I'm not lying. I'm not embellishing. There's nothing about this that is being made up. All of a sudden, it was like the ball comes down, and I look, and it's like middle return, and it is crowded in the middle. And so I was like, okay, middle return. And the thought kept emanating out, don't go down. Boom. No matter what, don't go down. Boom. I got hit again. Don't wow. go down. Boom. And then after that last hit, I saw to the right, it was like a lane just opened up. And it was like I stepped on the gas. And I remember I saw Rod Smith somewhere on the left, like okay. kind of like how Rodney Culver did on kickoff returns. Rod Smith was right there. Okay. I remember just running. Now, like playing it back, one of the things that I learned later on in my life is that your eyes see more than you realize. Okay. You're only focused on a certain point, but your eyes are seeing all everything around. Matter of fact, I remember they were doing an expose on what made Magic Johnson so amazing as a point guard, how he can look over here and do something and throw something. Right. Guy coming over, like, and so that's when they explained that. And they were like, every human can do it. And they were saying women have a wider peripheral vision than men. It's okay. like every human being can do it. Our, we just don't develop it. Right. But I remember running for the day for daylight, essentially running. I saw the, the lane open to the right. And then I saw it was like all of the fans were standing up and I they were behind the Colorado stands. And I just remember like I could I could see them. I'm looking this way, but I see them sitting down. And I, I remember running to like, I don't know if it was the student section or the band, but everybody was standing up. And I just remember like, okay. And I remember I could hear Rodney <laughs> like taunting the guy, who, whoever was chasing me, like, oh it's too late now. You never get it. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember uh got into the end zone, dropped the ball, and it was like ah. Mission accomplished. And then I remember uh, Rodney jumped on me. I remember Rick Waters ran from the bench all the way to the oh end. Oh, my God. God. Jumped on me like, yes, I love you. Yes, yeah, yeah. And then I was like at the bottom of the, the pile. And I was just, I just remember uh, it sounded like this to me. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, there's a flag <laughs> on the play. There is. A flag on oh the play. Gosh. Bro, I remember Rick got up. And it was like in slow motion. He turned around. He looked down Phil. He saw the flag. He was like, no. Oh, my God. And then it was like, I remember I, I, I got up and I looked down Phil. You could see the flag on the horizon in the field. Right, right. It was like immediately thoughts of defeat came mm. and the first thought was they're not going to kick it to us again so in my mind what was a strength for us they weren't going to allow us to get into that area anymore they were like no nope, you're not going to be able to kick it to us and then the second thought was man we're kind of a three yards and even though rick meyer was the quarterback right still like three yards in a cloud of dust type setup. Right, right, right. And right. then um, the the uh, the other thought was I'm tired. Like I realized I was tired. It was like that 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 wow. heavy Miami air, and it was just like all defeated, all thoughts of defeat. And it was like as I the the more the thoughts of defeat came, my body language I could feel it like I I became heavy to myself. Mm. Instead mm. of feeling like, okay, I'm strong, I can overcome this, I got what it takes, even if I don't, if I, if I say I don't know how, like all of the thoughts brought me down. 
And and I remember, and I was reflecting on like I was like, man, I and, and I again, this is I'm an old man when I'm thinking of the way I'm thinking now. Right. I was like, man, all those thoughts of defeat. What was what could have like if if whenever you're in a, a dark place, you gotta hold on to a pinpoint of light or something that's positive, and you gotta you just gotta just keep. One of the things that I learned scripturally was most leaders in the, in the Bible, they are in a point where they have to learn how to encourage themselves and not just encourage themselves according to their own strength, but okay. they encourage themselves according to the strength that the most high God has, the, their creator has. And sure. so I didn't know that at the time, but it's like now I realized and I thought about it, I was like, man, but what, what usually happens to people is the truth of the circumstances negates their ability to tap into right. the whole truth that right. is available to them. And so for me, one of the things that I realized was the Stanford game. Uh, I think it was early that year. We, 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 uh, and this is why hats off to college coaches who can have teams that just can keep their guys consistently in a place where they're going to win. Because most of the times, you know, if on paper you're better than another team, right. and sometimes you fall into that, oh, yeah, we're better than this team. Okay, they're hanging around. Okay, exactly. yeah, we can turn it on. We can eventually beat them. And then before you know it, it's like your chant, the dog on the right. clock, there's 26 seconds left. You're like, oh, wait exactly. a minute. Like, <laughs> All right, so exactly. The thing that I, I know I could have held on to, because when you tell people who've never experienced this, they need proof. Right. Well, the proof would have been for me was, and when I thought about this, I remember that Stanford game, and I remember I got hurt that game um, and I remember I had to be on a sideline and I remember Sean Davis, rest in peace. Sean Davis had a big game, man, big catches. And we were driving, 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 driving. And I remember we got to, I don't know, the 10 yard line and it was like seconds left on the clock or something like that. I'm, I, I might not be specific on that, but it was some kind of scenario like that. Right. I remember coach Holtz called a timeout and he brought us all to the sideline. Well, they brought this. I'm standing there watching. Bruh, he drew up a play in the dirt. And all he said was, he said, all right, this is the formation. He said, this is the protection. He said, Derek, I want you to down block or do something 1,001,002. Rick, you and whatever, play fake. And you're going to block the ends coming this way. Rick, you're going to roll out this way, come back. He said, Derek, you're going to be wide open in the. So it's like the when you're facing touchdown, Jesus. Right. If you're right. Facing the left corner of the ends. He told Derek Brown he's going to be wide open. Bruh. Draw, drew it up on the ground. Perfection. All of a sudden, the whole play. The only thing that happened was human error. And one of the running backs didn't get enough of a solid block on a, on the end that was rushing. Okay. And so Rick couldn't step into the pass. He had to throw it off his back foot. And it like Derek was running the opposite way of the ball and his momentum took him and the ball, like the ball missed his hand, but like that much he was like, oh. so, so, but the reason that, that that play came to mind was to remind me that even when I was in that dark place and I was everything that I could see as a solution was negative, right? We still had the capacity based on our coach to be able to come through. But it was like I felt like also, and this is sometimes the danger of having that one superstar guy or that guy that when everybody doesn't realize. When, when that guy is kind of is down and you're in the heat of the battle, it's like everybody's, like, oh, we'll just give it to, oh, wait, he doesn't, he's not. Oh, he doesn't. Right. And right. Then it's, it brings them down too. Right. So like, all those things happen in, in that play. And it's like, I didn't, you know, I, I think I was 20, maybe I might have been 21. 
uh, I might have been 21. Um, it was like I like at that young and that developmental stage. I, I wish I would have had the capacity to be like to tap into the part of me that was like, oh yeah, okay, yeah, they're probably not going through. All right, we'll we'll figure something out. Like even if I would have been like, I don't know what we're going to do, but we'll figure right. something out. Right. Like right. that would have been enough energy to give a release to that whatever it was, the remedy, the solution, the answer that is necessary to be able to manifest. 